to the channel guys today we're talking about the sun dolphin but it's gonna be a little different this time so when I got this boat I kind of did uh, the casting deck build right out the gate I didn't really do a review on the boat itself so I took all those mods off of it we stripped this boat down I'm gonna talk about the boat as it is when you get it from the store Okay, so if you're looking for a plastic John boat or just a regular John boat in general, guys, check out this Sun Dolphin American 12 foot John boat. Guys, this boat is rock solid. Okay, I've had 14 foot John boats in the past that were aluminum. And guys, I think this is a way better option than those aluminum boats. Yeah, the aluminum boats, they're gonna be easier to mod. And guys, they honestly might be a little bit lighter than this. But this John boat, you hit rocks and stuff, it's not gonna dent that aluminum because it's not gonna dent this up. This plastic is super strong. Okay, so if you like this type of stuff, go ahead and stay tuned for this video. I'm gonna tell you all about this Sun Dolphin American 12 foot John boat. And guys, you need to pick you one up. Okay, so hopefully after this video, you're gonna be convinced and you're gonna head out to Academy or wherever sells these. Okay, you'll have to check around. I know Academy does, that's where I got this one because they're hard to find. Okay, because they're just that good. So stay tuned for the video. So guys, when you're looking at this boat, I mean, it's aesthetically pretty nice looking. It's got the nice Sun Dolphin logo on the back. You know, it's got this metal plate that covers the transom where you mount a up to a nine horsepower motor or you can put your transom mounted trolling motor back here. You know, it says that you can only go up to a 40 pound thrust trolling motor but guys, I run a 55 pound thrust trolling motor on this. And I even run it off the bow, which is not reinforced. Not real sure if there's a piece of wood down in between that. But guys, it, it's pretty sturdy. And like I said, I run a 55 pound thrust trolling motor off of it and it works fine. Okay. I think the manufacturers, they honestly, they kind of lower those maximum ratings just to prevent, you know, damage and stuff like that on their end. So guys, 55 pound thrust trolling motor can handle, it can handle this with ease. Okay, I promise you. And especially with the metal mount on the back. There's somebody on my casting deck build said he runs a 20 horsepower outboard motor on his. So, you know, and he didn't say anything about braking. So that tells me that you can definitely put some upgrades on this boat. Okay guys, this is a 12 foot John boat. It is 144 inches in length. If you're going by inches, it is 52 inches wide. You guys, this boat is pretty stable. Check out my stability test video. That was with the casting deck, but guys, I will shoot a stability test video in this configuration with nothing on it, okay, to let you know how stable it is right out the gate. And I will tell you, if you're used to fishing off of a kayak or a canoe, this is definitely gonna be an upgrade for you. Okay, it is definitely not a bass boat, and it is definitely not a 15-foot John boat, 16-foot John boat that is super wide and very, very stable. It just is not that, guys, so don't go into this build or going into buying this boat expecting it to be that because you're gonna be disappointed. But, guys, it is stable for what it is, and I think you'll be very happy with it. Okay, the maximum payload capacity is 532 pounds. That is what the Sun Dolphin website says because I'm sure you could put more than that on it. Okay, I will say though, if you're hitting current, if you're going up current and you have a lot of weight on the front, let's say you put the battery, troll the motor, casting deck, everything up front, guys, that front end does get pretty low to the water, okay? And you run the risk of actually taking on water at that point. So just keep that in mind, kind of distribute out your cargo weight and I think you'll be fine. Okay, this boat weighs 110 pounds dry and that is with nothing on it you know without the anchor cleat and all that by itself as you get it from the store okay sun dolphin says that this boat is made out of a rugged uv stabilized fortiflex high density polyethylene hull and deck okay so that's what the hull and deck's made out of i guess the bugs are crazy if you see them flying around out here i'm <laughs> i'm trying to bear with you you know these bugs are terrible Okay, I've already said that the max that they recommend for a trolling motor is a 40 pound thrust and a six horsepower outboard motor to put it on the back. 
Okay, guys, and this boat is manufactured in the U.S., so if you're somebody who only buys stuff made in the U.S. of A., guys, this is going to be right up your alley, and you should look no further than this. It is built with very high quality materials and with that USA craftsmanship and quality. So guys, starting up at the front here, we're gonna start breaking down this boat a little bit and showing you what it has to offer. So right out the gate, there is a place to mount your trolling motor. Okay, I had to do some modifications to this to actually get my trolling motor to work, which is a very popular trolling motor. Okay, which is the Minn Kota C2 Endura. Okay, very popular trolling motor, probably the most popular trolling motor out on the market right now. And like I said, I have the 55 pound thrust. And guys, I had to do this modification. It's like a little plastic shim that I've made because if you don't do this, your trolling motor shaft is gonna rub on this piece right here where the molding is. See how that is like an inch or so sticking out? Your shaft will rub on this, so you have to shim it. Okay, so just keep that in mind if you're planning on buying this boat and running a trolling motor on it. I can't say that other manufacturer trolling motors do that, but you'll just have to mess around with it, okay? I took the same plastic and mounted it on this side. That way when I'm screwing my trolling motor down, it's not eating into this plastic and it's gotta make sure that this boat lasts a long time without rubbing into the plastic, okay? So, you know, this boat does have a warranty on it and they say they cover you know, damage and stuff to the hull of the boat. But guys, if you're screwing your trolling motor into that, that's normal wear and tear. And you know, they're not gonna cover that, okay? So try to minimize that wear and tear as much as possible. Okay, I did put an anchor cleat up here. That way, you know, if I wanna anchor off somewhere in the river, I can just drop my anchor line and run it through the middle here. Drop the anchor down. I run a 15 pound anchor on this boat seems to work out just perfect, okay? And they're pretty inexpensive. And then you can just tie off to this cleat. Down here, there is a metal hook, which is awesome. So when I load this boat onto my truck, I actually put the back in first. And that way I can use this as a tie down point to secure my ratchet straps to. So that thing is rock solid and I think it's a really good addition to the boat right out of the gate. This boat does come with oar mounts. So if you don't want to run an outboard motor, if you don't want to run a trolling motor as your primary source of power, you can run oars on this. Okay, oars are kind of like the old fashioned way of getting around in a boat, okay? But it does have those mounts and I think it's a pretty nice little addition. If you're looking for some kind of DIY project or something, if you're gonna make this into a really nice fishing boat, because this could be a mount for something, okay? You just have to get creative with it. Okay, I found that the build quality on this is really nice. This trim that goes around, it's kind of, kind of like a rubberized plastic. Okay, that's gonna ensure that when you're bumping up against stuff, you know, the plastic itself isn't gonna get damaged. And guys, I beat this thing around quite a bit. I'm out there shooting videos on the Dolphin all the time. And guys, this thing is held up and I haven't even scratched it that bad, okay? And I do drag it down boat ramps a little bit. Obviously not too far because that's just dumb, but you know, getting it off the truck and maybe you have to drag it two or three feet down the ramp, you know, it happens guys. And then if you're by yourself, it's really hard to, you know, handle this boat with all your gear in it by yourself. Okay, on the back here, this plate, like I said, this is really sturdy. It says it can withstand up to a six horsepower outboard motor. You guys, like I said, somebody on my channel said they run a 20 horsepower motor on the back of this. You know, I trust them. It probably does work, okay? Like I said, manufacturers lower the ratings just so they don't, you know, have you guys breaking stuff all the time. I did add like a grab handle back here. And this is just PVC pipe. I wanted to make it really big like this. And I took an old nylon belt and I unscrewed the plate and ran it through. And that way, guys, when I'm loading this boat by myself, you know, I can just pick it up really easy. It does have recessed grab handles up under here, you can see. So that goes up in there about an inch or so. So that's gonna help you load this boat a little bit easier too. But guys, this makes it a lot easier, I promise. Especially if you have a high truck bed and you're trying to, you know, get it way up that's gonna give you a little bit more leverage 
to get that boat in there a little easier. Okay, down in here, we actually have a like pre-existing battery compartment. That way your battery's not sliding around when you're moving around in the boat and stuff. So that, that's kind of a nice addition. I actually have a little rubber mat that I put down in here so my battery doesn't rub the surface of this plastic and potentially, you know, have a rub through or rub marks on it. And with that battery, I did add these little brackets right here so I can take a um, bungee cord or something like that and keep that battery from moving around. Okay, the boat does have a drain plug. It actually has two drain plugs, one that goes straight into the hull of the boat so you can drain out the water that gets down in between the plastic and also it has a drain plug so you can drain the water out of the boat itself. You guys, you can kind of see the drain plugs here. This one on this side is to drain it out of the hull of the boat and then the other one is for the boat itself. Nice little tag right there. You know, it tells you the color, it tells you the length, all that stuff. Guys, the seats are pretty nice too. You know, they're raised up just enough to allow you to fish comfortably if you're into sitting down and fishing, uh, but also they're rigid enough to where they're gonna support a lot of weight. Maybe you wanna stand on it and fish, flip and pitch from the side, whatever, it's gonna withstand that. And these actually, if you can hear that, these actually have a piece of wood underneath. So if you wanna mount like a seat post, or a swivel seat, you can actually mount that post right to the seat right there itself. We actually have cup holders and little recessed compartments. That way if you wanna put some uh, you know, gear and stuff down on the side, you can do that. It has two of these big seats and then it also kinda of has a little seat up front here. So I actually, when I take my family out, you know, I'll have my youngest daughter sit up front and then my wife and my other daughter sit in the middle here. And then a lot of times I'll sit on the back. So there's another battery compartment up here. So if you're running the trolling motor off the front and you don't want to get an extended battery cable, you can actually just run it straight to the battery up front. Keep in mind weight distribution though, you know, it can be kind of a pain in the butt, you know, with all the weight up front because a lot of times the back end of the boat won't track that well. But I haven't found that it's too much of an issue, but just keep that in mind. This boat does have four pre-existing rod holders, and you can see how thick that plastic is. So pre-existing rod holders, that way if you're catfishing or whatever, you're gonna have a place to put those rods right out the gate. You don't have to make rod holders or anything. There's more cup holders up front. This compartment is nice and recessed. I like to put bait boxes up here sometimes. And one of my complaints about the boat though, is all of these little ridges and ribs down in the compartments. Those get kind of annoying if you're trying to stand up and especially the front compartment here, if you can tell the battery tray right here is sticking up like two inches from the bottom of the boat. So it's like impossible to stand on that. So just keep that in mind. Watch my DIY casting deck builds and my compact casting deck build. And that'll show you how to get rid of this right here and make it a lot more easy to fish off of. So guys, if you're trying to take this out on like a bigger lake or something, I can't contest to how well it handles waves. Somebody on the channel said it does really well uh, but I just don't know. It's a really small boat guys. So just play play it safe out there I would not hit any major wakes in this even though the front of the boat is You know kind of angled and pointed to kind of break up some of the wake You know, it's still a John boat. Okay, John boats aren't really made for going out on big lakes I use this primarily for a river fishing boat and there, there really are no weights. It's, it's literally just me out there. So I can't really contest to how well it handles waves. Uh, that might be something you have to try out yourself. All right, guys. If you want to make this boat way easier to fish off of, I'm going to show you multiple different DIY options that you can add to this boat to make it way better. Okay, and they're super easy to do.
The first one is gonna be a compact casting deck. This is my compact casting deck. Guys, watch my build on it. Literally, it's just a piece of plywood with some other pieces of wood added to it to kind of fill in those little ridges and crevices in these different compartments. And since this is a river boat for me, I literally just added a rubber mat to it and glued it down. Okay, you could add carpet, whatever, depending on what type of water you're fishing. I get this boat super dirty. As you can tell, it has a lot of mud on it. So that's why I opted for the rubber mat. And I made a little grab handle here to make it easier to transport. And guys, that just goes right down in that first compartment. Look how rock solid it is. That's gonna allow you to fish a lot easier and not have to worry about stepping on that battery tray. Okay, so that is honestly my primary DIY that I fish off of. Yeah, I have the big, nice casting deck over here, but guys, I like this one the best. Okay, it's lightweight, it's easy to transport, and it's just simple, and it works. Okay, the second option you have is this big casting deck. And guys, you could make this casting deck for the whole thing. If you have a boat trailer, go for it, okay? It'd probably be really awesome. I don't have a trailer. I load this in the back of my truck, and I'm trying to cut down on weight. But I did the same thing. I have rubber matting, big piece of plywood, and you have to add a lot of little pieces of wood and supports to fill in all those crevices. And guys, that fits down in there. Very nice. Definitely check out the video up here on how to build this casting deck and the compact casting deck. Look how stable this is. Because you can get up here, you can fish. Very easy. Okay, this is gonna be very similar to how you'd fish off of a bass boat. And like I said, this is not a bass boat. Don't take the words out of context. But guys, this is gonna be a better option than fishing off of a kayak or a canoe. Okay, it's gonna be way more stable than that. And all of this you can do for less than a thousand bucks. Guys, if you're wondering about the stability of this, check out the stability test video. And I kind of got grilled in that video. Oh, that's, that's stability. So once again, if it's a kayak or a canoe you're currently fishing on, this is gonna be way more stable. This is not a $10,000 bass boat or $100,000 bass boat. This is a 12 foot John boat. Okay, so take it for what it is, okay? This right here does raise the center of gravity when you're fishing off of it. But I have found that the compact casting deck and this casting deck have very similar stability. Okay, even though the compact casting deck is another 10 inches down in the boat, I don't know, for some reason, it's still about the same stability, okay? So take it for what it's worth, build your own, kind of find it out yourself. But, you know, that's just kind of what I found out. Okay, guys, if you want to deck this boat out even more than it is with this casting deck, which is really awesome, I'm going to show you, you can actually add more compartments to it. Right here, I made a flooring to go in the middle section. That way, if I have my kids with me, I have a one and a half year old. She doesn't walk across those ribs very well. So I went ahead and made a floor once again with the same rubber matting. This is just a big piece of plexiglass or whatever. I don't know, I had it laying around the house. I can't remember what it came out of. I think it came out of some kind of shipping package or something. I think I bought a treadmill one time and this was like in the bottom to protect it or something. I don't know, but I had it laying around. So I'm like, man, that, that might be sturdy enough to hold some weight and actually make a good floor. And then once again, I just used epoxy and epoxied it down. And that just goes in the middle. Okay, and it just fits in there. And guys, that one with that plastic, it weighs 17 pounds. This casting deck weighs 45 pounds. So you are adding some weight to it. But guys, if you have a trailer, it's gonna be no issue. And it does make it way better, you know, if you have kids or whatever. But when I'm by myself, I don't run that because it adds, like I said, 17 more pounds. And I'm never going into that compartment really, unless I'm grabbing some extra baits or something. So it's just added weight that I don't really need. 
Guys, if you want to make this boat even better and make it more realistic towards like a tiny bass boat or something, you know, that's kind of that kind of craze kind of kicked in that uh, tiny tiny boat nation or whatever. Sorry about that. I got a lot of guys weed eating around the house here. But uh, for the rear casting deck, we use the same plywood. It's between half and three quarter inch. Like I said, I got it off a piece of furniture. It's kind of a weird thickness, but I have little braces back here. So that way, when you're using your battery in the back, I use a 24 group size battery from Walmart. Those terminal posts actually stick up a little too high. So if I just laid this in there flat, it would actually hit. So I put these braces on the back, but that's also gonna make it more rigid and sturdy. Once again, I use the same rubber mat material. I actually made a little hatch here and it's got little metal brackets that I screwed on the back here. And that actually supports the weight. And guys, I have stood on this. I've stood on the lid itself and it does hold the weight. Okay, so if you're looking for a boat that you can fish two people off of in this configuration, this is a good option. You can put somebody on the back fishing it too. This just fits right down in the back. Did you guys see that a little bit? See, this one isn't as stable as the front one because it's still, you know, I weigh almost 200 pounds and it's perfect. So maybe you got a kid that you're taking out fishing, maybe your son, daughter, whatever, and they can stand back there. That'd be perfect. Okay. And you can make it a lot more stable than this. Add some braces like I did to the front and make it a lot more stable, but I just didn't do that. I really don't ever fish with this one. It's just kind of one of those DIY projects that I did and never really used it, okay? But if you wanna deck this thing out completely, you can definitely do it, guys. The sky is the limit when DIY projects are concerned. You know, get creative. You know, I noticed on YouTube, I didn't see anybody else doing a casting deck for the sun dolphin, okay? So I'm like, man, I just did this project and I wish I would've captured it as I was doing it, but I didn't have a YouTube channel back then. Um, but yeah, I'm like, man, I should upload a video of how to do this that way other people can do these modifications to their sun dolphin and guys i think it came out really well you might be asking yourself okay what type of power and motor am i going to run on this boat so i use the mincota c2 endura 55 pound thrust trolling motor it's a great trolling motor check out my review of this motor up here in the info card but guys, I use it as a bow mount trolling motor. Also check out the conversion video on how to convert your transom mounted trolling motor into a bow mounted trolling motor. It's as easy as taking out one bolt, flipping the head around and tightening it back down. It's as easy as that, but I didn't know how to do it in the beginning. I actually had to YouTube it myself. So I kind of made my own video of it too. Okay, so for me, fishing off of the front of the boat, I usually fish this boat by myself I like the trolling motor up front. I put the battery in the back of the boat. That way it distributes the weight a little bit better. If you have the battery up here, you're obviously not gonna be able to run the casting, the compact casting deck. You could the, the bigger casting deck, but guys, that's gonna be a lot of weight. And I'm telling you, the front of the boat's really gonna sink down in the water and it's not gonna be a pleasant fishing experience. Okay, so distribute the weight out. Now I will say, I use a 45 pound battery. Okay, that's heavy, okay? It's a deep cycle marine battery from Walmart. And guys, it lasts a long time. I, I could probably fish for a whole day or two without charging that battery. So it's awesome in that aspect, but it's heavy. Okay, you can actually get smaller 12 volt batteries that you could probably use that small casting deck. Just throw the battery up here in the front compartment. And that would be a really good option. I'm, ac I'm actually looking at doing that. That way it can save me, you know, at least 40 pounds, I would say without having to use that big battery. But then you're trading off, you know, charge time, run time, all that. Because I usually only fish at tops, four hours every time I go out. So, you know, having that smaller 12 volt battery would probably be ideal for my application. And you know, a lot of us don't have that much time to fish, probably be a good application for you as well. I'm gonna hook up this trolling motor and battery and show you guys how I place those in. So if you are using the battery in the back. You're gonna to have to have an extended battery cable to do that. 
on this sun dolphin you have to have a 10 foot battery cable extension okay check out this video right here I show you where I get this from this is the Newport vessels 10 foot extended battery cable and it's only like 40 45 bucks for it but it is going to distribute that weight and get that battery in the rear of the boat all right I got the trolling motor here okay 55 pound thrust So guys, I actually added grip tape to the mount right here. That way this motor doesn't slide any. Because I had it on there without it. And guys, when you kick it into the fifth power setting, this thing really takes off, puts down a lot of power. And if you're turning, it can actually rip it right off the mount. Okay, so you just tighten those down real quick. Okay, the battery cable that I have I rigged it up with a circuit breaker. Okay, check out my boat build video. I'll tell you exactly where I get this circuit breaker. It's on Amazon and how much it is. But this is a 60 amp circuit breaker. This Minn Kota, the top maximum amp it pulls is 60. If you were to get hung up, let's say on a stump or whatever, and it tries pulling more than 60 amps, it's gonna trip the circuit breaker and it's gonna protect your investment, okay? I just have this wired in. I usually screw this down to one of those pre-existing rod holders. That way I'm not screwing it into the, the bow of the boat. So for this demonstration, I'm just gonna lay it in here though. And there we go. 10 foot extended battery cable. We got the battery in the rear of the boat. I put the rubber mat down too. That way it doesn't skid because that's getting us there. That is getting us out on the water. It's getting us fishing. I do plan on getting some kind of plastic coating like, a, like that wire tubing, that flexible wire tubing. And I'm actually gonna cover that battery cable with that in the future. That way it protects it a little bit more because I do drag this around, you know, getting it out of the river and stuff. It does get pretty muddy and dirty. So I kind of want to protect that. All right, I'm going to show you what it looks like when you start putting the casting deck on with the configuration as it is. So with the compact casting deck, you actually have to raise up the battery cable to get it in there. I'm sure you could come up with ways to actually put that under that casting deck, but, or floor, it's more like a floor, I guess. It's not really a casting deck, but that's what it looks like. So you do have to kind of worry about the cable. With the big casting deck, it hides that cable completely. And I'll show you that right now. All right, and there you go. As you can tell, the battery cable is completely under the casting deck. The circuit breaker is completely under the casting deck. And literally you could just, Run your line up through here. Okay, and it's pretty much out of the way. Now, if you wanna go ahead and throw that rear casting deck on. Then your battery cable is definitely out of the way and it's just right along the side of the boat here. Okay, so I think this is a killer setup, especially if you had a trailer where you could just leave it like this all the time. You know, it would be really awesome. Guys, if you want to know exactly how this was made, check out my boat build video, and I'll tell you and explain how to build all this. One extra thing, if you're using a trolling motor as your primary source of propulsion, guys, definitely take a backup paddle. You know the old saying, don't catch yourself up the creek without a paddle. That's definitely the case here. And I've heard of people's trolling motors giving out or the battery dying, whatever. It happens all the time. Don't catch yourself out there without a paddle. Okay, they make collapsible paddles. You can just throw that in this back storage compartment here and you're good to go. You're gonna have a backup option in case your primary means of power goes out. Okay, keep that in mind. And guys, 
if you have any questions about this boat build or about the sun dolphin so the review it was kind of this video started out you know as a review of the sun dolphin as it comes from the factory and then we talked about diy upgrades that you can do to this boat to make it even better and more fishable because you don't have to do that this thing is great right out of the box because i just showed you upgrades that you can do if you want to like i said the sky is the limit when it comes to upgrades and making this boat your own okay i'd like to hear from you in the comment box you know what you guys have done to your boat to make it even better or tell me how it does just right out of the box and how you like it because i picked this boat up for 550 bucks at academy sports that is brand new right out the box right off the showroom whatever price I was actually looking at a 1436 Alumacraft John boat at Academy. And guys, that thing was like 1200 bucks or more. And they didn't even have them in stock. So that's why I picked up this one. But I'm kind of glad I did. This boat is just that much better. And it's a fraction of the price. And I did, honestly, I didn't need a 14 foot John boat. This 12 footer is perfect for, I fish very small river systems. And this is the boat for me. Hey guys, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Also drop me a subscribe. I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to have you part of the channel. And guys, if you've already subscribed, thank you for all your support and love that you guys have been giving me. Guys, we've grew the channel from, we, we've only had the channel for like two and a half months and we've already almost hit 300 subscribers. Okay, so I think it's pretty good. You know, you guys have been liking these John Boat builds and John Boat videos. Check out my Sun Dolphin Adventure videos up here we're, we're running a series i'm only on episode two right now but guys later today i'm actually going to shoot another video on the dolphin we're gonna get out there we're gonna get some big river bass okay i'm hitting up those smallies you guys know i'm on a smallie kick man i love those freaking smallmouth they just put up such a good fight and they're just awesome to catch so guys thanks for watching this video hope you like this boat and i'll catch you in those future videos